Today, the Biden administration in hot water over recent decisions on schools and the CDC now is officially recommending double masking, but the uh, the details in that study might make your head explode. That's what we're here for, to make your heads explode, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and White Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez. Today joined by the birthday boy, Glenn Beck. Thank you. Only 21. 29. Oh, 20, 21. 21. I heard 19. <laughs> yeah. We'll just take, it. We'll take yeah. the middle. Only 14 Seven. years old. <laughs> and I really let myself go. When I, when I made my first birthday, well, I came out and I was 8 pounds, 16 ounces. And I've got to get back, back to a little <laughs> closer to my birth weight. I've let that. myself go. Maybe just lose the birth weight, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've gotta, just got to lose a couple birth pounds. Like you get down to maybe 15 pounds with <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, obviously joined by Elijah Schaefer, host of Slightly Offensive, uh, which you can find here on Blaze TV and also on YouTube for now. Mm -hmm. And That's I, also, I, I always preface for it with Check like, for out. now. I also brought, because there's the two masks, I'm still yes. on the one half mask rule, <gasps> so this is pretty good and I keep this with me everywhere. That's amazing. You know, that looks like, like pantyhose used to look. It looks like <laughs> nylons. But which, it'll, it'll get you on a plane. Was, w shut up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've actually heard uh, also that, that, that does nothing. The mask with the actual mesh holes and the rhinestones will also get and, you on a plane. And the beard uh, pokes yes, out. It's very creepy, but I mean, so are all masks. This is what people used to wear in the <laughs> 70s to rob banks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got some new uh, mask guidance for you guys later on in the show. And Glenn, you said off air, you said you have not heard this yet. So I can't, no. I can't wait. Consider it my birthday production present. for tonight's special all day. Yeah. By the way, are you now or have you ever been a Trump supporter? I am. Answer the question. <laughs> yes. Answer the question. Wow. 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 Okay, there's trouble there. He's an extremist. <laughs> that's what's that's what's coming. Hey, yeah. According oh, to Swalwell, yeah. according to, you know, farting Swalwell on TV, he thinks everybody's an extremist, right? And that's what we're seeing right now. Well, did you see what the news was from Axios? No. T uh, yesterday, I think it came out. Axios did a story where they were talking about what to do with these extremists. Mm -hmm. And um, they talk about they have to be deprogrammed. And the last part of the article, I mean, it's all step by step. Last part of the article says the government can't do this because the government doesn't have credibility. And so if the government does this, it'll only make things worse because people will say, see, they are rounding people up. Okay. So they need a public private partnership. Oh, <laughs> to be able to deprogram the extremists and put them into a program that would be funded by the government but fronted by public private partnership. That's the Great Reset. Wow. That's the Nazi death camps. That's, it was a public private partnership. Uh -huh. They went to companies and said, hey, can you use these, these Jews as slaves? Hey, can you make some ovens for us? I mean, that's the extreme, but at some point, when you keep telling people, these are the enemies, they're extremists, they, they, we can't live with them. If you have this utopian idea that you're going to heal the planet, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and if, they, if we don't stop these guys, we're running out of time, at some point, they do say, we gotta round them up. Yeah. Okay, well, round me up. I probably support Donald Trump. Well, I did, and I still do. So it is frustrating too because I had, and we'll get into the to the hi uh, highlights of the day here in a second. But I had someone on the program last week who was talking about, um, you know, obviously citing what Democrats call radicalizing Republicans. But he said, well, and then they, you know, they're they're radicalizing. And I'm like, hold on, don't, don't use their language. Stop using the term radicalizing. Mm -hmm. No one is radicalizing anyone. That's something that they've co-opted and used on the American public to make them think that it's actually happening and it's not. So the New York Times released a story today that we actually said to the reporter when he called last week, we said, oh, please run this story. Go ahead, run this story. They took stuff that I had said two days before the Capitol Hill thing and they, they had it as ellipses and it said, we have to fight back, ellipse, mm -hmm. then, like Five minutes paragraphs later. <laughs> down to another thing. Well, the paragraphs were all like, we have to fight back, but we have to fight back like they did. You know, we have to get smart. We have to, you know, do it legally and peacefully. I'm not talking about, they put this all together. 
I don't think it's a coincidence that they're coming after me, Mark Levin, Rush Limbaugh, and uh, somebody else um, today, today, and saying about our rhetoric. Hmm. Hmm. Who else is on trial today for their rhetoric? Hmm. They are they are using the impeachment. They are using January 6th. And I'm telling you, the next target will be voices like yours and yours and mine. Yeah. They will target us. They're targeting Donald Trump. And well, we couldn't get that done. But if we're the same kind of doing the same kind of rhetoric, they couldn't get him. But boy, the FCC can sure take care of us. You know, social media, a public private partnership can certainly take care of us. Mm. Well, uh, on that note of optimism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is like fact checkers on steroids. This is what it started out with, yeah. right? With you had the nonpartisan uh, Vanita Gupta, I believe, who was trying right. to petition uh, the tech companies to censor conspiracy theories and misinformation, but of course only those that could have led to a re-election of Donald Trump. Right. This is all nonpartisan. Now she happens to work for the Biden administration. This was political targeting developing. And now that they're back in power, they're just saying, we need to wipe these people out from the the uh, table entirely. And they're not going to stop. And they won't stop with even with us. They'll oh, no. go down to every single person who oh, wants yeah. to voice their opinion. And that's what's so scary is you go, are they really going to go after, you know, close to 80 million Americans' voices? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, they will. <laughs> yes, they will. Yeah. And, and you, what's really, truly crazy is how fast this is all happening. It mm -hmm. is happening at lightning, lightning speed. People are not going to understand what hit them. Pandemic steroids is what I'm calling it. <laughs> they just injected us with all, all, everything they wanted to do over the last t like 10 to 12 years. Yeah. They got it done in like nine months. Yeah, and then at least they're, this is the first time they've been efficient. So <laughs> we'll give them that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the uh, White House is in a little bit of hot water after uh, the White House press secretary. Jen okay. I say Saki. I've heard you say Pasaki. No, I say Pasaki because she Pasaki. Pasaki. sucks. Pasaki. Well, I yes. say Pasaki because she's talks like she's been drinking a little bit too much Saki. So <laughs> who knows what it actually is. Whatever. But uh, she has said that President Joe Biden's goal in the first 100 days of his administration is just for half of U.S. schools to uh, to be open for in-person instruction. Oh, by the way, that's not full time. That's just at least once a week. Here is the White House press secretary. Could you help us understand what the White House is or what the president's definition of open schools is? Does it mean teachers in classroom teaching students in classroom? Or does it just mean kids in classroom with a remote screen? Help us understand. Sure. His goal that he set is to have the majority of schools, so more than 50 percent, mm. open uh, by day 100 uh, of his presidency. And that means uh, some teaching in classrooms. So at least one day a week, hopefully it's more. <laughs> and obviously it is as much as is safe in each school mind. and local <laughs> district. Can you imagine? Some teaching. That's, you didn't use the same majority qualifier there. You just have to have some teaching in school, some teachers in school, not the majority of teachers in school and the majority of classrooms. Well, teaching at least one day a week um, in the majority of schools by day 100. Okay, and that's in-person teaching? In-person teaching, yes. Mm. Uh, Such a ahead. stretch goal. Now imagine, imagine if uh, you told your kids to clean up their room and take out the garbage and they said, got it, mom. And then it wasn't happening and they said, no, we understood. This is a stretch goal for us, mom. We would pick up 50% of our room at least once a week. I, I hope to do it more. <laughs> and 50% of the garbage would be taken out. You, that, those are the lowest You're possible grounded. standards yeah. ever. You're grounded. Yeah, it actually breaks my heart because Number one, this is we've already been actually sacrificing the lives of our yes. children yes. with Big abortion. Yes. But we're genuinely now, our children, our born children that are here that need intellectual stimulation. And I, I know a lot of people have criticisms here about opening up schools. They go, well, these are indoctrination camps. And A, that is true for a lot of people. But B, especially from, like, like I said, I came from a lower socioeconomic background. I know that it's really hard for parents to survive by, by one staying at home to teach yes. kids. Oh, yeah. yes. So this isn't like some, somebody who's decided long term, hey, I'm going to homeschool my kids. We're gonna to do what it takes all of a sudden the government was like we're going to screw you over possibly remove one of your jobs and also force you into teaching these mm -hmm. kids are not getting the education they deserve and when she says something like that she's not only spitting in the faces of parents but she's spitting in the faces of an entire generation of children who are going to fall behind and i don't know if that's by design let me ask you this 
I think it is by design. Yes. Um, let me ask you, why does a teacher's union that wants a lock on, uh, have, has advocated for no other schooling except public schooling, why is it the teachers union is the one dragging the feet when the evidence shows the longer they go, the more people are going to private schools or going to homeschooling mm -hmm. and people are changing their lives and getting into a habit of, I don't need this school because it's going crazy. Why would they do that? How does that serve the long term? Other than breaking the will and the spirit and the whole model of school. You're, we're not going back. I, I, people don't understand. Countries, when they go to war, they never come back out of war as the same country. When you go to war, things change because they have to. People want the war over so badly that when you come out, they don't, not, not everything goes back the way it was. There's lots of changes in a significant war. Look at the difference between America when we went into war, 1939, 1941, to where we were when we got out. Lots had changed. And you don't notice them. You were getting so far away. People, you go to, you go to have people from California. Where's your friend from? Michigan? I yeah. just met him. Michigan. They come here to Texas and they're like, what is happening? They don't know how to communicate anymore because they haven't done it in a year. Yeah. This is not good. You know, a girl actually told me on, on a walk recently, I was walking my dog and she seemed to have been visiting with her friend and she goes, can I touch your dog? And I go, yeah, of course. And she goes, oh my gosh, this is the first time I've touched a dog in over a year. What? And I go, what? what world are you living in and what's going on? She didn't have a Texas accent. She sounded a bit Californian, you know, and I know, mm -hmm. I know California very well. I'm from there. And so I was going to, I go, oh my gosh, some people have been so damaged and destroyed oh, yeah. through this pandemic and the fear that I even noticed an article that I read today that was saying, okay, we might just have to deal with, with COVID as being a part of our, our country now, but what we still need to do is to continue to restructure and change our society in the way that it operates and moves, and that's gonna be the greatest takeaway. And I go, that's what this was about from the beginning. From the beginning. This is about changing society. We were you were mentioning that. I've talked about it a lot on my show, The Great Reset. This is a, a plan, an organized plan, to completely dethrone the American exceptionalism, the country that we love, anything that, that brings patriotism, the value to this nation and to create a generation of blithering idiots. So it is, it is worse than you think. A company, they are so far ahead. A company, um, and I can't remember which state, I'll have more on this in the coming days. Um, a company that was doing analytics convinced a school district to allow them to put tracking devices in the students' shoes during recess, okay? <laughs> and so they said oh. they were doing it and it, you see it. They're following the footprints of all of the kids because in a week's time, they could tell you which ones were trouble, which ones were gregarious, which ones were the leaders, which ones weren't. How terrifying wow. is that? And they are talking now. I mean, everything is being geared to uh, owners and the leadership class and the rich class and then the workers and consumers. We are being bred to be workers, consumers. You'll never get out of, of this. And the more, the more substance or subsistence that you need from the government, once you start to get handouts, once you, this is why healthcare is being broken like it is right now, because you're going to, when, when the government is paying for it, the government will have a right to say, well, you need to exercise. Mm -hmm. You can't eat those foods. Mm -hmm. You can't smoke. You can't do this. Okay, that seems reasonable. But when they have total monopoly over it and they can say, oh, well, you know, you have basic minimum income, but you've been on the Internet on these sites a little too much. I think you should back off on that. It's a social uh, a, a social score. It is exactly what China is doing. We just don't see it yet, but that's what's coming. I feel it. I feel like there's someone at the table who's been warning of that for a while. 
I don't know. I, I can't. I know you have. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I know she's talking about you, but I mean, I, and I, I think this is what's interesting about the nature of man and then also the trajectory of countries. Since we're on a globalist shift, I remember back in 2011 when I first went to UC Irvine uh, uh, College, I didn't even really know what globalism was on a great scale. They didn't teach yeah. it to me. And I remember mm -hmm. hearing about like, I'm going globalism. Like in every class there's this theme that I started going to every one of my general ed and they're teaching me about the, the wonders of globalism, the need to see your, your, your country as a market and the need to see your country as a means to production. And I'm going, this is so foreign to me because I had a very, I, you know, I went to a very uh, pro-American loving school in high school. I was homeschooled most of my life. And I'm going, what is this? There's nothing about patriotism, uh, the love of this country, fighting for what we believe in, uh, nothing. It's just all about this universality of seeing yourself as a cog in this machine. Right. I knew something was wrong then. Uh, I knew that there was a problem, but going ahead, you know, 10 years now, you see this that, uh, which I know I've always noticed is that as China is becoming more like the US, a little more free, the same factors are there. You're only more free as you give loyalty to the party. You move Correct. into the city, you go under the watchdog of the cameras and you are loyal to the party, you will be rich. In America, it's the same thing. It's that we're becoming more totalitarian, but you can keep your freedoms. You don't get them, but you keep your freedoms if you're loyal to the party and you allow and you stay online, allow the watchdogs to watch you. So it's the exact same system to keep people from being free but it's just one, like you said, one's the government and one is, you know, national but trillion it, dollar corporations. But it is the same thing. China is no longer a communist state like it was. It's a hybrid. For 20 years, they've been saying China is the future. And I've been saying, I don't want that future. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they took the best of capitalism and then the control of communism and merged them together. So wow. those corporations, a lot of them are owned by the state, but many of them are public-private partnerships. The state tells you what you have to do, and as long as you comply, you get rich. The minute you speak out, you're gone. Yeah. You're gone, and somebody else takes your place. Yeah. All right, uh, we've got more to come, including the CDC officially updating their face mask guidance. You're not going to want to miss this. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Candid. If you are like me, maybe you uh, you or your parents spent a lot of money on your teeth to like make them very straight and nice, mm -hmm. and then you stopped wearing your retainer, and then your teeth shifted, and you were like, oh, don't want to go home to the parents and let them see that I've wasted their money. Uh, get Candid, all right? I did it. Uh, you can too. Thousands of people have used Candid. They are clear, comfortable, removable. They're practically invisible aligners, and they will help straighten your teeth. It's very, very easy. They send it all directly to your home. Uh, the kit, you do these little impressions. You send it back. A licensed orthodontist reviews everything and ships you out everything. Very easy. All the steps are in order. You just snap them in your teeth and go. It it is that easy. It's also going to save you a ton of money from going straight to the orthodontist and getting actual braces. Um, and it's more comfortable and people aren't going to call you brace face. So you can look forward to that. Uh, if you are looking for a straighter, straighter smile, you got to go to Candid. CandidCO.com slash Y. Use code Y to get $75 off. That is CandidCO.com slash Y. Use code Y. Get $75 off of their already very, very reasonable prices. CandidCO.com slash Y. Back in a minute. The CDC updated its mask guidance today to include data from a recent lab experiment that found that placing a cloth mask over a surgical mask as well as, a pro as using a properly fitted mask was effective in stopping the coronavirus virus spread. Um, now, I just want to, before we go into like the details on this, I, I would like to point out, I know there are a lot, I saw all the headlines on Twitter. It was like CDC now says double masking, double masking more effective. Um, I would just like to say um, if we could show, um, they, they actually just use mannequins uh, for all of their studies, which I don't know how the mannequins were breathing in the study, but I'm not sure how they measured um, the respiratory, um, you know. Uh, I would, uh, Elijah, yeah, the respiratory I think, function. Uh, <laughs> yes, Glenn. He's white because I, he's going, I'm just, getting too old for this. I just think that maybe uh, mm -hmm. the CDC <laughs> yeah. should, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Huh? <clears throat> yeah. I can't. I, I lost your train of thought there. No, I oh. no. I just mm -hmm. have 
two words to say, <laughs> and I can't say them. Oh, um, okay. It would be inappropriate for me to say them. I, I, I this is insanity. It's yeah. absolute insanity. There is, I don't know, Tasmania or some place that nobody ever travels to. There's this new bug that is released that you get, and within four hours, you're dead. Four hours. And the first sign is vomiting up blood, okay? Yeah. And four hours later, you're dead. That's a pandemic. That spreads. That's a pandemic. This is a bad bad cold for 99.7% of the population. This is insane. Mm -hmm. If the mask thing would work, well, you know, it would work even more being quarantined in your house. Why is New York and California performing like they're performing and Texas and Florida seem to be okay? Why is that? Why? Great question. It's probably because I'm wearing half a mask and you guys are feeling the shame of not having any. <laughs> yeah. No, but in reality, like, you know, it, it's funny because when I think about even with masks in general, and I realize that, you know, these are a cultic symbol, right? It's, this, this, is, is. This, is, this is to make sure yes. you're part of the club. I know it is because when you can see my face through this and you're walking and through. And your beard is poking yes, through it. Yes, and people, you know, are okay with it. You're going, all they want to see is you have something on your mouth. I know Chad Prather and I were joking, calling them like Covinis or whatever, like a bikini for the mm -hmm. mouth face. But, but when you talk about, oh, these are double masks, here's how it works. It's like, number one, I don't believe any of this until Jen Psaki is wearing four masks during her press conference. Like, that is a real thing. Jen Psaki needs to be wearing maybe five masks because I need to see an example. I need Biden to be wearing four or five masks. Like, I'm not going to believe that I need to until why they're... Saw, why saw I know, but that's five? what I'm saying. Gas masks. I want them to be in, in a gas-chambered hazmat suit. Like, you, <laughs> if you're telling me that this is so serious that I need to change my life, I want to watch for a standard of seven days without any inter interruption. You do it first. And yes, I know Pete Buttigieg... With his little husband and stuff and his little, you know, nicely matched, you know, and, and con contrasted uh, double masks. And that's him. And that's his lifestyle. And he, do, he, he can do that. Uh, but for the rest of us, I already, I, I'm not going to uh, do this. I'm not going to wear this. I will tell you that, have you been in the briefing room? Been in the White House briefing room? No, I have not. Okay. Jen is about this close. This close. I can almost touch you. She's that close in that, uh, in that position. So... When she's talking, they are right, right there. there. Yeah. And for her not to be wearing a mask, if you believe this garbage, you're exactly right. And then you look at MSNBC. I, I actually was in D.C. MSNBC was doing a live shot. And I just saw this person with a light, nobody around them, and a microphone. And they were talking. And I'm like, <laughs> where is the camera? The camera was like 30 feet away. Why are you wearing a mask? There's no one around you. Right. No one around you. Outside. Uh, and so just let me just give you a little bit more details oh on boy. this study. And those of you who maybe, you know what? Share this episode with a friend who may be confused about what these studies are actually saying. This is directly from the CDC website. I saw it myself um, in the discussion on the actual study that they cite in wearing double masks. It says the findings of these simulations should neither be generalized to the effectiveness of all medical procedure masks or cloth masks, nor interpreted as being representative of the effectiveness of these masks when worn in real world settings. Wait, what? <laughs> so. What? It, so, okay, so so take that, all right. Also, um, they might not be generalizable to children because of their smaller size, oh, or to men with beards and other facial hair, which interfere with fit. Uh, and by the way, ah. later on down in the paragraph, it does also say uh, it also may impede your ability to breathe. We've all got to shave. We, so, can't, we can't be men. Basically, here's the study that we're citing for the new guidance. Also, throw all of this out because it actually doesn't give you any because evidence of a real world setting and how it, it should work. neither be generalized to the effectiveness of all medical procedure masks or cloth masks, nor interpreted as being representative of the effectiveness of these masks when worn in real world <laughs> settings. Would you get on a plane if Boeing said, we've tested this thing? It's never flown. 
but we've tested this thing in an air tunnel a uh, thousand times and it, it's a completely new design. Um, and I know people are like, you're gonna die because it doesn't have any wings. But I'm telling you, once the rocket fuel runs out, you are going to have smooth sailing and everyone will be safe. Would you do it if they had never used it in a real world uh, situation? Like never flown in a real world? Never yeah. flown. No. Hey, I'm going to so. put you in this autonomous car. We've run simulations, but it's actually never been on the road. Right. No. No. Mm -mm. No, no. No, I trust the Chinese Communist Party more than I trust the CDC <laughs> to tell me the truth. To be completely honest, the CDC is like, so I think Jack Sparrow put it in, in good words when he said that the pirate you know, laws were sort of like guidelines where you just kind of like, they're not really meant to be followed. They're just advisories, <laughs> right? So the CDC at this point has lost credibility with any, you know, fundamentally truth-seeking person that, that is out there trying to understand what's reality and what's not. It's become a, a sort of a religious specter like the World Health Organization to sway those who can be controlled. And you know, when you see the World Health Organization saying, oh, maybe actually the virus came from Australian beef or meat, and so we're gonna shut down, we're not gonna, no longer gonna look at this Wuhan lab, you're going, this is the stupidest and one of the dumbest things that I think that I've heard. And I think that's the intention though. The intention is like a bait to see how stupid people are and to try to put a feeler out because it's like, well, one mask, two masks. I mean, they're suffocating people, yeah. legitimately yeah. speaking. And also healthy people, I might add, don't need to wear masks. This, this, this sort of spread that comes from where you don't have signs or symptoms. I'm going to tell you, everybody I know that has spread COVID, now this could be anecdotal, but everybody that I know, it's a lot of people in California, a lot of people. Mm is they definitely felt something within like 12 to 24 hours of being around someone with COVID. And then that person, they go, dude, they did have a runny nose. They did kind of have a fever. Right. They were ignoring it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, or in half, I would say more than half the time, it's literally like, yeah, they were diagnosed with COVID in my house and I just caught it from them while bringing them soup. You know, I mean, it's not like, I don't hear anyone being like, oh my gosh, like I'm just walked around a group of kids and I came home and I died. Like that so didn't happen. I, I mean, we put, cause remember the, C the CDC said, in your home, you have to have an isolation room and have everything in that room that somebody might need. This is week one and put everything in there. So we put a microwave, we put a refrigerator in there. We had everything that anyone might need if somebody got sick. By the time th my family started to get sick, we were all sitting on the couch together. And I was like, no big deal, no big deal. I'm the only one in the family that had a hard time with it. Everyone else, it was fine. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, this is ridiculous, especially when it comes to kids. <sighs> All right. Uh, we've got more coming up. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Home Title Lock. Uh, so more good news abounds. Uh, you may have thought that maybe COVID couldn't cost you your home, but it just might because cybercrime is actually up 75 percent. So congratulations, everyone. Great job. Uh, cybercrime is uh, you got to worry about home title theft when it comes to cybercrime. So actually, there are these hackers who go on. They find your home's title, which is available online like everything is uh, and they forge your signature on a quick claim deed and then they can say that you sold your home to them at which point they can take out loans they can leave you in debt uh, all of your retirement nest egg is totally gone you're not going to know it until a late payment or eviction notices arrive by the way uh, if you're not too frightened yet Common identity theft programs do not protect you. A banking program, if you go, you're like, oh, my bank probably covers that. It does not protect you. That's why you have to protect your home with Home Title Lock. The instant Home Title Lock detects someone tampering with your home's title, they will shut it down. Now, you're not going to know if this has happened to you yet unless you go to HomeTitleLock.com, register your address to see if you are already a victim. If you use code RADIO when you do that, they will give you 30 free days of protection. That is code RADIO only at HomeTitleLock.com. That is HomeTitleLock.com. Uh, President Biden has reportedly canceled a plan put into place by the Trump administration because they're reversing everything Trump did because everything Trump touched was apparently really horrible. Uh, but this plan would track the rising influence of the Chinese Communist Party in the U.S. education system. Um, so the rule was requiring colleges and K-12 schools that are certified to have foreign exchange programs to disclose any contracts, partnerships or financial transactions from the Confucius Institute or classrooms. Um, Which is a, this is a communist, yes. wholly owned, 
public-private partnership with the Communist Party to infiltrate, uh, spy on, and introduce propaganda in our universities. It is clearly documented. Mm -hmm. And, it, and, and so we're doing that. Yeah. Biden's doing that. At the same time, he's appointing a guy who was in a public-private partnership with another company over in China, spending a lot of time in China with this, this communist-run group. Uh, and he's the head of our new CIA. Great. I had not heard that. Well, nothing <laughs> surprises me, though. Wonderful. Really nothing surprises me. I mean, what is kind of strange, though, and this kind of brings it up, I, a few years ago I did work a little bit in China, and no, not for China. I was just stopping in there to do some, some sales. And I remember what was so weird is I was... Maybe that's I'm the just, shadiest thing I've ever heard you oh, say. Oh, uh, no, I was just yeah. stopping in there no, no, to do no, no, some no, no, sales. No, no. I, was, yeah. I, was actually, no. I was actually, surprisingly <laughs> not, I was, I was, I was okay <laughs> looking at one point, yeah. and I was like kind of like a brand model representative for, okay. a, for a vaporizer company. And <laughs> I went there, and uh, I remember being so surprised at how almost like America the city felt, besides one factor, is that everybody was like a machine, and nobody spoke to you on the street, nobody was happy. Everyone was just like they were living in New York, you know, and it was just mm -hmm. this metropolis of, you know, and I remember asking like, what's the, what's the uh, population here? And it wasn't like 5 million, it was like 25 million. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, how do you operate 25 million people in a city like this? Well, obviously through authoritarian control, you know, where you just push all these people and shove them into an area. And I remember thinking like, this is so weird because this is not what I, you know, remember learning what China's like. Things have rapidly changed in the world. And you can tell that there's a lot of American style architecture, design, influence, culture, et cetera. And I'm going, what is up with this relationship between us if they are supposed to be our enemies? Well, it turns out a few years down the road, even though they technically still actually are the enemies of the United States, Elites have decided that that's, they're going to take that idea and they're going to use it to their advantage. They're going to cash in on it and they're going to do it at our expense. And now as I walk through the United, United States during the pandemic, I'm going, I feel like I'm walking through China a few years ago. People are unhappy now. They're not smiling. They stick to themselves, but they're still making money, at least some of them. And I'm going, I get creeped out on the fact that there was still a difference then, but now it's like, I mean, I'm telling you, it's, I won't go back to China probably ever again unless I have to, but mm -hmm. the way that the countries have become like each other, you go, this had to have been by design. Oh, it was. It absolutely was. And it, and it is here as well. I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated by AI, uh, and, and AI is going to be miraculous for a while, and I think it also could be the end of the freedom that we've ever understood. Um, you know, don't fear the machine, fear the programming of the machine. So who's programming AI and what are the goals of that AI? Um, but I've, I've looked at um, the things that are coming in AI and it will, it will shut us down so fast. You cannot think faster than AI. It is when we get to the singularity, it has the power of every human brain on earth thinking about the same thing at once. Okay? So it's it's measuring all of everything. And by that time, it will know how each of us are going to react, who's in our system of friends, how to thwart. All of all of this stuff is just on the horizon. And with the way China is, is dealing with things now, I just read an article, the Pentagon is, uh, ha had begged during the Trump administration, begged Google to help them create AI for soldiers and create drones and droids, if you will, for soldiers. And Google wouldn't do it. Well, guess who's with the Pentagon now? Guess who's in charge of our new AI project? The guy that used to run Google. <laughs> wow. Uh, let, one last question on this, because it really does kind of blow my mind that, you know, Biden, I mean, we heard a lot from you on his connections, his son's connections um, with China, um, you know, at, not just China, but China in particular, there were rumblings all over social media about this. How, like, it just blows my mind. I know it shouldn't, but it always does. The audacity that they have to just do all of this out in the open. What are you going to do about it? 
because there's no accountability, I guess. No there's one's, no, no no one's going to go to jail for right. anything that they do. You'll go to jail. Yeah. You'll be deemed. I mean, you already have been. You were investigated. Can I say any of this? Yeah, no, I, it's not closed, but it's fine. Yeah. It's public information. I mean, he, he was investigated by the FBI. I know. I, I told him, I, I, want, I want, if the FBI comes right. and gets him, I want the FBI to come do it on my show for so the ratings. The ratings. Right, yeah. No, there's, they still are, and, there's, yeah. and, and they're even looking. This is what I was going to tell people. The... the the complicatedness of all this is, is you would think like when they find out, oh, you have a federally credentialed press ID that says property of the U.S. Senate on the back and it says press gallery for the House of Representatives and Senate. And you would think that when you're showing this to police officers and they're allowing you through lines and you're documenting a real world event, that that would be enough to say, OK, this person's not colluding okay. with mm -hmm. rioters or revolutionaries, whatever term you want to use, you know, failed coup. Yeah. You'd go, right. But then they go, well, now, which I didn't know, then the FBI leaks information. Well, now we're checking him for you know, tampering and messing with whatever federal documents, wiretapping. Like, they just start thinking of things, wiretapping, tampering. There's no evidence. I didn't do anything like that. You don't have evidence. Why even do the investigation? Well, look at the impeachment right now. I mean, it, there's, it's a conspiracy theory, at least that's my take, to say that his rhetoric during the speech is exactly what incited the, 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 uh, the violence. But they're also illegally trying to impeach a private citizen, I believe, too. But it doesn't matter because they don't care about the law and what they can do. It's about spectacle and putting their fists down on people. They're saying, look, this guy had the right to do what he did, and we will still try to destroy his life. Now, imagine if you don't have that protection. Look at the power we have, and they flex it to the public and go, if you don't have that protection, we will do all of this and worse to you. And maybe he got out, but you won't. And it sends a message. That's what I think that's, uh, it's about. Big Sending time. a message mm -hmm. to people that it, that's why they don't stop. In a real world, I would think America would be like, oh yeah, okay, he's in a good position. Let's shut down this investigation. But they haven't because it's not about that. George Orwell said his last warning to the world, guy who wrote 1984, his last warning was, our future can be imagined if you imagine a boot stomping on a human face forever. That's our future, unless you wake up and say no. And Americans and the world has to stand up and not be afraid when they come to you and say, hey, we got to do this critical race theory. You know, we're going to have that, uh, that, uh, that uh, business uh, you know, meeting on critical race on Tuesday, don't go and say you're not going. Mm -hmm. And tell, stand up in your office and say, none of you people should go. Yeah. All right, uh, we've got more to come. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar, which I have a bone to pick with you, Glenn, because I, you got me on these. They are so good, aren't they? I eat, I'm embarrassed. I eat like multiple Built Bars a day. I, I don't it, know if you're supposed to, no, but I Well, <laughs> I guess you could. They're really good for you. If you look so like, I'm like you, yeah. I tried my first you know? one today. You gave me three, and I actually felt really sad because I went to give one to my guest and to my producer, and it kind of made me sad because I knew I should share them, but I was like, oh, I wanted to keep them. You yeah, know? I'll okay. give you some more. Okay. Don't okay. worry, I'll get Thanks. you some they more. They are real. Really good. They're What's your favorite? So good. Um, I really like the cookie dough, but they just came really out with good. this. Have you tried the new coconut brownie chunk? No. Oh my gosh. Don't get Glenn started. So oh my gosh. He's not gosh. getting younger. He's it's like, so my good. favorite is my good favorite for is you, the, though. my favorite is the uh, chocolate mint brownie. Yes. Which is like, I know. oh my gosh. I know. It's better than like a, what are those? You I like the apple. I mean, I tried the apple and that was even really good too. Like, I thought that was cool that they had the different, the chocolate, the fruit flavors, everything. So it's like, no matter what your palate is, there's something for yes. you. Yes. Yes. So and it's real chocolate. It is 100% real chocolate. By the way, we're talking about a protein bar. It's a protein bar. It tastes like a candy bar. If you're looking for, no something that aftertaste, no chemical. We taste. love food. You can tell we I like know. Bilt Bar. It's yeah. like, I'm so passionate about Bilt Bar. <laughs> this is like genuine too. It it's really like, is. I'm hungry. I love them. My whole family. Well, my <laughs> husband hates chocolate, but my my son steals them from me all the time. You got to try them. Go I to builtbar.com. Use promo code news20. You'll get 20% off. That is builtbar, B U I L T bar.com. Promo code news20. Back in a minute. Uh, in Great Britain, a group of hospitals has instructed midwives in the maternity departments to use different terms. We need to be trans-inclusive. They are tackling the greatest uh, issues of our lifetime, really. Uh, when treating transgender patients, they need to be more gender-inclusive. So they're substituting, uh, you can't say breastfeeding, you have to say chest feeding. <laughs> Why, guys have breasts? I have a breast. I mean, my breasts are bigger some, than some girls. So the chickens. <laughs> you know, yeah. 
I mean, <laughs> why, why, why? Uh, <laughs> I, chest feeding now? Breast, you replace breast milk with human milk or chest milk. Uh, you know, I'm gonna call it chest milk when the baby drinks it and then goes, because they have to spit out a little bit <laughs> a little. of chest hair. <laughs> 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 I, no, so, I just pictured that. I was like, yeah, oh, sorry. No. I, so I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, to you, I'm like, but men can't breastfeed. Okay. But I think they're saying trans, trans men. Trans men, people who were women. I reject that phrase. I, I reject the existence so. of being able to transition yeah. into another sex. I don't think there's any, I, I agree people get good surgeries to look, like Blair mm -hmm. White is, is a is a She's YouTuber. Hot. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's even confusing. Sometimes I know that it's not a woman, that, but it's somebody, and I'm friends with Blair, and Blair would have no problem me saying this, yeah. but you know, I, I know that it can get confusing. But it's like when it comes down to the fact that nobody believes that Blair is having a child. And also, I know they're thinking about doing surgeries and whatnot, but it's like, it, it's just absolute madness that this minority population that exists, which we've agreed, they said we exist, we're visible, we're here. It's fine. So, fine. Yeah, okay. But it's like, I'm not going to change the, the entire society it's around about a chromosomes. Few people. Mm -hmm. Right. It's about chromosomes. Right. It's it's embedded in you when you're born. So you're not changing chromosomes, you're changing the packaging. That we look at that and go, you know, somebody's making horrible horrible food, they just repackage it. You're like, no, that's the same, same. crap <laughs> in a different box. That's all that mm -hmm. is. Yeah. You're not changing what's in. Yeah, and I just have to say, as someone I, who just recently had a baby, if you have just had a baby and they set the baby on you and they tell you that you need to breastfeed the baby and you're concerned that they used the term breastfeeding instead of chest feeding, you are a psychopath and you should not be having children. <laughs> All right, we, we've got to take a break. We'll be back. Most likely you didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't forget to uh, go to wherever you get your audio podcasts, subscribe, rate, and review the, uh, the podcast. That way more people can find this podcast and listen to the news of the day and why it matters. Uh, and, of course, by the way. Nine o'clock tonight. Yes. Uh, our, the new Red Scare and our Reality Czars, a new special, 9 p.m. Eastern. It'll be on the Blaze YouTube page and for Blaze subscribers. And you get additional footage. I have Don Jr. on at the end. And wow. I talked to him about how the president's doing, what he's thinking about impeachment, where he goes next. All of that will be for subscribers only. Wonderful. Uh, and by the way, before we go, Another great happy birthday to yeah. you, Glenn. Oh, yeah, we've got a little, you. we've got a treat oh. for you. Uh, oh. We've got, yes. Now the cake is up oh, for us. Because we heard that you were on a diet, so <laughs> right. we got yeah, we'll a salad. Right. So, thank you. happy birthday. You get a built bar and, and a, a salad. salad. Oh my gosh. But thank you for having a birthday so go. we could have cake. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you both. <laughs> uh, I've never had more salad in my life. I have had more salad. Yeah, I feel like. Uh, in the last I four weeks. Oh, I want this salad to burn. <laughs> Uh, I've had more salad in the last four weeks than I've had in my entire life combined. Have you, have you started liking it yet? My daughter is, she's a really good cook. Yeah. And so she's doing vegan. It's all vegan. Yeah. I told my wife the other day, I'd eat like this every day. It's just impossible to make. Right. But it's, I mean, I actually have enjoyed every salad. I love it. Well, I can't, I can't. Vegan, I, even the candle's vegan, I think, No, too. this is, but this is the, <laughs> this, Oh, burn. Burn <laughs> it down. I'm sure this yeah. won't be delicious at all, Glenn. I mean, it will be, but we won't tell you about it. It's wrong. That's it's my wrong. corner piece. That's my corner piece.